Ang programang ito ay hatid sa inyo ng Pagkor. Get ready for an intense, extreme, exciting experience. Here's PCSO's newest, biggest game ever. The Ultra Lotto 658 for only 20 pesos per drop donation. 50 million pesos is at stake. Pick six numbers from 1 to 58. Hit the jackpot and be an ultra millionaire of 50 million pesos. Exciting consolation prizes await you ranging from 20 pesos up to 280,000 pesos. More numbers, bigger prizes. See posters and print ads for details. Sa PCSO, bawat taya para sa kawang gawa. Sana namang pagkilala ang ibinigay ng KBP sa DZRH sa katatapos na KBP Golden Dove Awards. Best Radio Public Service Program Host, Deo Makalma. So ay lalong nagbibigay sa atin ng uh, inspirasyon para lalong... Uh, Best Radio Newscaster, Angelo Palmones. Ang pagbabalita para sa akin, hindi lang obligasyon. Ito'y isang karangalan. Para Best mag- Radio Children's Program, Boses ng Kabataan. Para sa inyo to, para sa lahat to ng mga kabataan, mga nagpakita ng kanilang talento. Best Radio Culture and Arts Program, Art to Art. Kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa KBP para sa kanilang pagtitiwala at para nga. Best Radio Drama Program, Batang Mujahidin Radio Baliktata. Kami Balik po ay nagpapasalamat sa KBP sapagkat ito ang... Sa KBP, salamat. Ito ay aming inspirasyon para sa tuloy na pagbibigay ng tamang balita at tamang serbisyo sa bawat Pilipino. All fundraising organizations Be a partner of PCSO To its newest project PCSO Partner Tayo Interested parties may visit The PCSO Product and Standard Development Department Third Floor Conservatory Building Shaw Boulevard, Mandaluyong City You may also visit any of our branches In your vicinity or province Or email us at PCSO underscore marketing at yahoo.com Partner Tayo sa pagtulong sa Pilipino Nakakatulong ka na, umaasin sa kapa ang programa ito ay hatid sa inyo ng PCSO. Sa Thinking Out Loud with Rafi Alunan, marami na sa ating kasaysayan ng mga personalidad na tuwirang ipinagmamalaki ang kanilang mga ginagawa upang protektahan ang mga overseas Filipino workers. Naglalatag ng iba't ibang mga programa para sa kanilang proteksyon at karapatan. At isa sa mga ito, ang kamakailay sumubok na na tumakbo sa politika para sa hangaring tulungan ang mas malaking bilang ng mga Pinoy's and OFW's here and abroad. Ngunit, hindi pinalad sa pagkakataong ito. Gayunpaman, hindi nag Naging hadlang ang pagkatalo sa nakarang eleksyon upang ipagpatuloy ang nasimulang advokasya para sa mga makabagong bayani ng bansa. At ngayong hapon, alamin natin ang mga plano at mga bagong isinusulong niya para sa minamahal niyang bansa. Pakinggan at panoorin ang tapatan ni na Rafi Alunan at Susan Toots Ople sa DZRH Radio. Manood sa DZRH News Television at sa ating live feed sa DZRH News Television Facebook page at YouTube Live Channel. Gayun din sa ating website sa DZRH News Com. Lahat ng ito, hihimayin ngayong araw sa Thinking Out Loud with Rafi Alunan. Magandang araw sa iyo, Toots Ople. <clears throat> Thank you for uh, coming to us uh, sa Thinking Out Loud with Rafi Alunan. Yes, salamat sa invitasyon ka, Rafi. Uh, si Toots, eh, makakasama kami sa Harvard uh, Association, uh, yung Kennedy uh, School. At saka fellow senatorial candidate uh, ko si, si Toots noong 2016, except that she belonged to another group. Um, but uh, no matter what, win or lose, we're still serving the people. Kaya uh, nandito kami para pag-usapan yung sitwasyon ng ating uh, OFWs uh, dahil sa maraming kinalaman si Toots. She's devoted her time and her life to serving the OFWs following in the footsteps of her father, the former minister, Blas Ople. Toots, um, umpisahan natin, uh, ano, ipintura natin yung 
larawan para sa ating uh, tagapakinig. Uh, ilan ba ang OFWs talaga na nakadeploy abroad? Well, pag sinabi mong OFWs, this refers dun sa mga um, manggagawa natin na dumaan sa POEA, merong kontrata with their employers, madalas two years yan, minsan three years. Um, sa seafarers, baka mas maigsi pa. Uh, siguro, ang bilang nila um, in terms of annual deployment na sa 2 million, no? 2, 2 to 3 million um, worldwide. No? Um, yung iba naman, may kategorya din tayo na ito yung mga permanent residents na o yung mga iba green card holders, um, may mga may asawa na rin dayuhan. So, nasa kategory sila ng overseas Filipinos. In totality, 10% ng population natin are living abroad. So, that's mga, mga 10 million. Okay. So, out of the 10 million, meron tayong mga registered workers yes. na dumaan sa POEA. Mga dalawang million yan. Mm -mm. So, remaining ang balance, 8 million. Of the 8 million, meron pa niyang mga permanent residents abroad. Yes. At saka, the rest are unregistered workers. Ganun ba yun? Um... Alam mo, may, may konting debate dun sa paggamit ng unregistered, undocumented. Oh. Kasi kung tutuusin, may passport sila. Yes. Nakalabas naman sila ng, ng maayos. Pero um, kung stricto yung pag-define mo at ang pagbabasehan mo ay kung dumaan ba sila sa POEA, POEA o hindi, may mga workers kasi na nagre-renew ng contracts nila on their own na hindi na kailangan ng recruitment agency. So, very nebulous, very ano, yung, yung figures natin, isa yan sa gap sa okay. labor migration ng Pilipinas. Ang yung actual dyan, figures, stock taking of figures. Okay, ang tanong dyan is, uh, if I were approached by a foreign company to work abroad, yes. do, I, do I have, does the law say that I have to register sa POEA? That's the um, legal procedure. Okay. Na yung contract mo will have to be verified by the polo office yes. abroad, the labor attache. Tapos dito ipapadala, again, i-verify din yan ng ating uh, POEA. Um, may recruitment agency na, na gagabay sa worker natin. Okay. And, and um, May mga pagdadaanan din yan. Kailangan mag-mandatory yung pre-departure orientation seminar. Dapat OWA member ka rin. Meron ka rin PhilHealth, Pag-IBIG, SSS memberships. Okay. Uh, of course, the usual medical tests. Yeah. And the reason for the registration is because the government wants to protect the worker once he leaves the Philippines. Tama ba yan? Yes. That's the, that's the primary reason. Yes. It's really for their protection and welfare. Kasi, Karafi, pag nandito ka sa Pilipinas, Yung buong makinarya ng gobyerno, mula barangay hanggang presidente, nandito eh. Yes. Pag lumabas ka at tumawid ka ng dagat, ano man bansa, yung buong makinarya na yan, liliit yan magiging embassy lang o konsulado. Tama. Minsan wala pa nga, so honorary consulate ka lang. So, uh, para sa protection ng worker, maganda na kung kunyari may sumiklab na crisis, at least natatrack ng gobyerno natin kung nasan sila. And um, nakatie up din dyan yung mga beneficyo ng iba't ibang institusyon. Dahil doon lang nila malalaman, ah, ito legal to na OFW. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Toots, um, alimbawa, eh, nagkagulo sa isang bansa. Mm -hmm. At yung bansa na yun, eh, merong mga registered uh, OFWs at mga unregistered. Meaning to say, hindi dumaan sa POEA. Yes. Pero may legitimate na kontrata. At uh, pareho silang inabuso ng kanilang mga employers for whatever reason. Uh, ang ibig sabihin ay eh, yung nag-register ang uunahing iprotektahin at saka yung mga hindi nag-register ay eh, hindi kasi maghihintay. malinaw 'yon sa um, ating batas na wala dapat diskriminasyon. Okay. Um, basta merong OFW na nasa labas ng bansa na kailangan ng tulong ng gobyerno, kailangan tulungan. Okay. Um, Ngayon, ano ang advantage na dumaan ka sa legal na pamamaraan? May agency ka. So, yung agency na yon, dapat yun ang first responder mo. Pag nalaman nila na inaabuso ka, dapat gumawa sila ng paraan, kausapin yung counterpart nila, kunin ka dun sa iyong abusive na employer. At kung ang hiling ng worker mapauwi sa Pilipinas, dapat yung agency ang gumawa ng paraan. 
Ngayon, paano kung hindi umakto yung agency? Okay. Pwede siyang habuli ng POEA. Bakit mo pinabayaan yung worker mo? No? And, and um, dahil may record sa POEA at sa ating embassy, yung worker, mas madali nilang ma-rescue. Yun ang difference. Ngayon kung TNT, uh, walang may alam kung nasan, sinong employer, may pagkakataon ka, Rafi, pati pamilya hindi alam uh-huh. kung nasan yung worker. Doon tayo nahihirapan. Okay, in actuality, yung mga dumaan na sa hirap at uh, let's say na nabugbog o ginahasa halimbawa at humingi ng uh, tulong at proteksyon, uh, natulungan ba talaga? At o oh, have they encountered more problems in the process? Iba't ibang uri kasi ng problema eh. Yung isang ah. OFW, no? yung range ng problema niya napakatindi. Um, maraming natutulungan. Hindi for lack of trying. Pero yung sheer volume ng OFWs, kung titingnan mo yung ratio, sa JEDA, for example, isang embassy staff per 11,000 OFWs. Wow, malaki, matindi, JEDA matindi. pa lang yan. Mm-hmm. So may mga pagkakataon talagang nahuhuli. Mm-hmm. Kaya ang importante, dito pa lang sa application stage, protected na sila. At malaki ang role dyan ng POEA, ng labor attaché natin pag-verify ng contracts, at mismo yung OFW. Mm-hmm. Minsan kasi yung OFW nahihiyang magtanong, nahihiyang mag-research, Lagi namin ina-advise, huwag lang kayong mag-depend sa inyong agency. Huwag lang kayong mag-depend na a-attend kayo ng apat na oras na pidos. Buhay niyo yung nakataya dyan. So, you have an obligation to yourself and to your family. I-research niyo yung lugar na pupuntahan niyo, yung nature ng company, kung saan kayo ma employ and humanap din kayo ng mga dating Saudi, dating uh, South Korea, para may makakwentuhan kayo, ma-prepare nyo yung sarili nyo. Meron kami natulungan um, uh, karafi. Wala pang isang linggo gusto nang umuwi. Dahil lang sa iba yung lingwahe, na-overwhelm siya, inutusan siya, I- ng, niya inutusan siya yeah. ng employer niya, naligaw siya once, at nat- ilang oras siyang hindi nakabalik ng bahay, na-traumatize na siya, ayaw na niya. Hindi, yung buhay ng OFW, hindi para sa lahat. Totoo yan. Actually, uh, mayroon akong observation, uh, mm-hmm. Toots. Yung, yung binabayaran sa ating OFW uh, is getting, uh, ay, mawababa na mawababa. Uh, yun ang observation ko. Mm-hmm. Hindi tumataas. Dahil sa very competitive yung labor market. Mm-hmm. At, uh, <coughs> There are instances where yung mga may trabaho na rito ay eh, gustong pumunta abroad dahil sa halimbawa doble yung ibabayad sa kanila. Pero hindi nila kinikwenta yung mga uh, deductions, y- yung babayaran nila sa kanilang uh, employment agency uh, plus other deductions. Ano? So much so na yung neto na may iwan sa kanila is hardly any different from what they're getting here in the Philippines. Uh, how do you get to convince them to think properly before they sign on the dotted line? Actually, meron ding opposite niyan. Oh. Dito, maraming deductions. Sa taxes pa lang, yung upa mo, yung renta, yung uh, transportation cost mo. May mga, lalo na sa Saudi, uh, may mga job contracts Libre accommodations. Walang tax yung salary mo. Bu- bibigyan niya sa iyo ng buo. Kaya ito mga, yung, pro- mga professionals at office workers ito? Uh, oo, pero kahit domestic worker kasi eh. Mm-hmm. Isipin mo, magkano domestic worker dito? Uh, swerte na kung liman libo. Tawid ka sa Hong Kong, 27,000 pesos. Uh, punta ka sa Taiwan, factory worker, mahigit 30 mil. Uh, punta ka ng Saudi or any Middle East country, 400 US. Eh, tumataas yung dollar ngayon. So, magkano rin yun? So, it, it, ano eh, it, um, uh, they have their own computations. Mm-hmm. And it's a driver really. Yung cost of living dito, as against yung salary natin, and then yung contractual seasonal work na yun ang madalas na open uh, sa, sa mga nag-a-abroad. Professionals, walang problema eh. 
Problema, nagda-dive ngayon yung market, we are getting more expensive sa mata ng employers kasi they are paying a higher service fee for Filipinos to get Filipino maids. For example, they, they pay 3,000 US uh, pataas minsan for Middle East countries. Yung Indonesia, 200 US. Yung Bangladeshi, nagda-dive yung mga yan, yung mga Nepalese. It's like very, very competitive, yes. It's very competitive. Ngayon, we want to attract them back. Um, ayaw naman natin na forever na DH yung mga lang. kababaihan natin. No? There's nothing wrong with, uh, it's a very dignified uh, uh, and, and decent work. Ano? But we, we want to aspire naman bigger dreams no, for our workers. And that's why um, we are happy that the, Yung build, build, build. I, I've been monitoring that, and, and I've seen that as a pathway, no? Na, na somehow, and also the faster broadband, na BCDA is envisioning. Maganda yan kasi um, we really need to accelerate our competitiveness as a nation. I remember uh, long, long time ago when I joined a company, a joint venture mm. company, uh, which was Filipino Japanese. Mm -hmm. Doon ko nalaman na yung mga malalaking mga kumpanya ngayon, mga big trading houses in mm -hmm. Japan na tawag ay Sogo Sosya, nagumpisa yan with the overseas Japanese na nakakalat mm -hmm. all over the world. Ang ginawa ng Japan, eh, kinumpul nila itong mga overseas communities mm -hmm. and uh, gumawa sila ng uh, parang trading routes, no? Uh, to each of those countries where they were. Yes. At silang naging mga distributors ng Japanese products to the point where uh, trade went up and they built their Sogo Socias. No? Uh, tayo, we uh, don't have we've that. been deploying our OFWs yes. for so long, and yet uh, Philippine business and government have not taken advantage of the deployment of our OFWs to improve our, uh, uh, our trade, to enhance their, their survivability, uh, to improve the economy. No? Yun nga yung ano namin ka, Rafi, isa sa siguro um, nakakaligtaan. Oh. We, we know where they are, how many are leaving. Yes. We don't really know how many are coming back and the skills that they bring yes. and the capital that they have. For example, dumalaw ako sa Singapore. I have a friend there, nakilala ko lang through Facebook. And we were walking along uh, yung main thoroughfare ng Singapore. And he would point out buildings. Oh, kasama ako sa design team na gumawa niyan. Parang, and then naglalakad lang siya, na shorts lang siya, very simple na tao. Naisip ko, alam ba ng gobyerno natin na ganyang kakahusay? Parang, ang daming factories, oil and gas all over, energy uh, plants na Pilipino ang talagang gumawa. At saka yung lengguahe lang eh. Yes. Uh -oh. Our Filipinos are deployed in over 100 countries in the world. Alam nila yung kultura ng mga bansa na yon, alam mm. nila yung lengguahe, alam nila kung how to relate. No? Pagdating sa goodwill ambassadors, people-to-people -people relations, communication, information, pwede natin ma-harness yan. Yeah. Eh. No? Ngunit uh, ang kagaya ng uh, sinabi mo, para bang uh, naliligtaan. Meron isang ano na, actually sinabi ko to kay... DOT Undersecretary uh, Ricky Alegde, who's a good friend of mine, sabi ko, pwede nyo imbitahin lahat ng foreign employers. Imbitahin nyo parang goodwill. Tayo naman ang mag-invite sa kanila and show them yung bansa ng kanilang mga empleyado. That's right. Kasi these are potential investors. Their children are being That's cared correct. for by our people. So obviously, the trust is there. Pero hindi natin nakikita sila as investors. We just see them as employers. Wala yung emotional connection. And yet, every day, they rely on our Filipinos to run their companies and also their and, households. And many, many of our Filipinos are serving government officials. Yes. Mm -mm. And uh, they, can, uh, they can enhance government relations, uh, bilateral uh, at multilateral. Correct. Nung nagpunta kami ng tatay ko sa Bahrain, na kausap namin si uh, yung Emir, and he was telling my dad, sana next time pumunta kayo, sama niyo si Pinky Web. Kasi <laughs> pag nanonood yung mga nanonood, oh, ano, yung 
mga Pilipino sa household niya, alam niya, na, napapanood din niya. Tapos na, yung mga anak niya, and then nakikwento, and then love na love niya yung mga Pilipino. Yung isa, nag-uwi pa sa kanya ng manok na Texas. And sabi nung no, Emil, pinagawan ko pa ng air condition na cage. Yung manok, para lang hindi mamatay kasi, di ba, yung climate. Pwede ganyan. na siguro so, ako mag-apply bilang manok. <laughs> Pero di ba, Karafi, yung goodwill na ganyan, hindi ba natin pwedeng... Exactly, we, we can eh. bank Harness on natin that. Yun, oh. eh. Leverage oh. natin, ano? Yes. But uh, who, who would be in the best position to do that for the government? And who would be in the best position sa private sector? Nako, yung private sector, baka nga mas maasahan pa yung private sector eh, working closely with the recruitment agencies kasi they know where the employers are. Uh, obviously, DFA and the DOLE and DTI, DTI yeah. but just invite them. They'll, I'm sure they'll, they'll um, and have an audience with the president. That's they'll DTO, be so happy. DOT can do that. No? Oh, oh, pwede yeah. rin. Pwede rin. Parang out of the box lang ba? Oh, kasi tourism, you know, tourism and investments yan eh. Yes. And trade. trade and and tourism, infrastructure, and they can, you know, they these our, our workers are employed by the biggest construction companies then. Eh. Okay. Uh, in the recently concluded ASEAN summit, yes. uh, merong isang uh, kasunduan mm -mm. Which, which has to do with uh, migration within ASEAN. Yes. Uh, which will be beneficial to our lab uh, laborers, no? labor market. Um, Ano yung mga opportunities at mga challenges uh, na nakikita mo as far as this is concerned? Kasi we're dealing with uh, uh, ASEAN member countries that are also in the labor market worldwide. So they're competing with us. So ano bang mga challenges, ano yung mga opportunities? Yung opportunities muna, no? Kasi parang 70% ng migrant population sa buong ASEAN, mga Pilipino eh. So we are really ah, the so number one tayo. Uh, uh, mm. Number one tayo na ano, next lang yung Indonesia eh. Um, so this will really benefit around 215,000 uh, Filipinos that are working in the ASEAN region in in the 10 countries ano. Um, very clear heads of state na ang pumirma. Hindi pwedeng kunin yung passport ng kahit sinong uh, ASEAN worker. Um, accommodations, dapat adequate siya. Meron tayong domestic worker, minsan sa ilalim lang ng lamesa natutulog, natutulog dahil maliit yung flat. No? So, hindi, hindi pwede yun. Um, access sa pamilya. Doon ako tuwan-tuwa, Karafi. Nandoon sa ASEAN um, uh, consensus, visitation rights ng pamilya. So, um, ibig sabihin niyan, um, pwedeng i-arrange with the employer, makadalaw yung Mga pamilya. Asawa. O, o pamilya. asawa o anak. Okay. Um, tapos, meron din doon na... May home leave ba yan? Well, nasa contract naman yun, may vacation ah, okay. leave eh. Pero yung Ito makadalaw... Yung makadalaw doon sa yes. worker? Yes. Okay. Oo. Um, tapos, yung access to legal assistance. The legal rights of the nationals are on the same footing na yung ating migrants. Okay. That's a huge thing. Even access to language interpreters. Okay. Pagkailangan. Um, adequate pay, uh, no excessive charging mm -hmm. by the placement agencies. Importante yan. Lalo na for Singapore. Alam natin, sasabihin, no placement fee. Pagdating doon, six months, salary deduction. Oh. But you can invoke this now to say, O teka, di ba, pumirma kayo? Of so, all places, ha? Singapore, eh. Yes. Meron ganun, ha? Oo, meron ganun. Um, ano pa? They all agreed that they will um, work together against all forms of human trafficking. Okay. Which is a good thing. No? So, so, marami siyang positives. Challenges is always in the implementation. ASEAN to, eh. Yes. Uh, the conference, they, they meet, ano yan, once a year? Once a year, actually. Oh, oh. And next year, ang maganda lang dito sa consensus, they all agreed that there will be an action plan. Okay. And that will be, um, hopefully, uh, approved next, next year, year under Singapore's leadership. Alright. So, in approved in principle, 
Next year, uh, hopefully, approval yung, approve yung action plan. Yes. Then after that, yung implementation. Yes, and they form a committee. There is a committee that will monitor the progress. Okay. Yeah. So on that note, uh, we're going to take a break now, and then uh, we'll return after, after the break. Ang programang ito ay hatid sa inyo ng PAGCOR. Calling all fundraising organizations. Be a partner of PCSO to its newest project. PCSO Partner Tayo! Interested parties may visit the PCSO Product and Standard Development Department, 3rd Floor, Conservatory Building, Shaw Boulevard, Mandaluyong City. You may also visit any of our branches in your vicinity or province or email us at pcso underscore marketing at yahoo.com. Partner Tayo sa pagtulong sa Pilipino! Nakakatulong ka na, umaasin sa papa! Reklamong totoong pinakikinggan. Reklamong talagang pinag-uusapan. Reklamong talagang tinututukan. Pinakikinggan, pinag-uusapan, tinututukan. Sama-sama, sabay-sabay at tuloy-tuloy nating tutukan si Greco sa programa Ireklamo kay Greco. Kasama si Greco. Greco Belhika, linggo alas dos ng hapon, sa bayang matututukan sa DZRH News Television, DZRH Radio, DZRH News Television, Facebook at YouTube Live Channel at DZRHnews.com. Ireklamo kay Greco. Get ready for an intense, extreme, exciting experience. Here's PCSO's newest, biggest game ever! The Ultra Lotto 658 for only 20 pesos per combination. 50 million pesos is that thing! Pick 6 numbers from 1 to 58. Hit the jackpot and be an ultra millionaire of 50 million pesos! Exciting consolation prizes await you ranging from 20 pesos up to 280,000 pesos! More numbers, bigger prizes! See posters and print ads for details! Sa PCSO, bawat taya para sa kawang gawa. Ang programang ito ay hatid sa inyo ng PCSO. This is still Thinking Out Loud with Rafi at uh, Lunan. At kasama pa rin natin si Madam Toots Ople. <laughs> eh, nakasulat, Madam. <laughs> Napaka-formal naman. Oo nga. <laughs> uh, Toots, um, nung nakaraang, sa nakaraang administrasyon, uh, may dalawang issues na talagang tinamaan yung mga OFWs. One, one was taninbala, and the other mm. was uh, yung pagbubukas ng kanilang mga... Uh, balikbayan boxes yes. ano at uh, malaki yung ano skandalo na lumabas doon at uh, ang pagkaalam ko na ayos na yon uh, ano ang uh, feedback from the OFWs grabe yung hinanakit ng OFWs nung nakarang administration kasi um, yung sa tanimbala nga na naharas talaga sila and nakita mo naman tuwing lalo na ngayon tuwing Pasko Noong nakarang administration, balot na balot ng plastic, oh, parang saran wrap yung mga bagahe nila. And uh, tayo ang sumama kay Nanay Gloria sa Hong Kong para lang makausap yung employer nila. Wala na yan ngayon. Okay. Kasi kung may nakukuhang bala, um, hinahayaan na lang umalis yung, yung uh, worker kasi hindi naman mga live bullets to eh. Yung iba... Mga blanco. Uh, may mga, mga ginagawa nilang accessory, oh, parang tama. anting-anting oh. o kung ano man. And hindi mo naman ma-educate lahat eh. Pang-extortion there, talaga yun. Oo, oh, oh, hmm. there was no criminal intent at all. Pero eh, yun nga, um, yung isang sinamahan ko, hindi wala siya talagang dalang bala. So, ngayong Pasko, I'm pretty sure wala na tayong makikitang nakasaran rap. Okay, I mean, that's that, good news. That's already changed, di ba? Yung sa nilalaslas yung maleta. Oo. Diyos ko, time immemorial, naririnig na natin yan. I think nabawasan na rin yan, pero meron, meron yatang one or two 
incidents na lumabas sa news. Um, Dinaslas o binuksan? Uh, I think, kung tama ako, parang may kinuha eh. So, I yes. don't know kung nilaslas or bin, paano binuksan. May, merong video noon, di ba? Uh, 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 dito yata nangyari sa Nea Terminal. Uh, yeah. Terminal 1 yata yun. Yeah. But I, I think na, ano, hindi... Kasi alam naman ng mga taga-airport that this government means business eh. Diba? So, so mga isolated okay. cases yun. Uh -oh. mm -mm. So in other words, uh, everything is all right now compared to what it was before. Yes, I, I think it's better now kasi everyone knows na basta OFW, si Presidente is always on alert and uh, ayaw niyang may napapahamak o pinagkakakitaan ang isang OFW, lalo na kung magbabakasyon lang to be with the family. Oh, mahirap naman ilulun yung wala pag uh, nagali si Presidente. <laughs> Ay, yun pa. Isa pa yun. At uh, wa walang pagdadalawang isip na masisibak malawang yung, <laughs> yung gumawa noon. Yun. Okay. So, uh, yung, siguro yung mga issues na maluba para sa ating mga OFWs ay eh, yung mga mga pangyayari ngayon sa labas, like yung gera sa Middle East, yes. uh, yung banta doon sa Lebanon, mm -mm. Ano, uh, yung uh, growing uh, rift uh, at saka armed conflict doon sa area ng uh, Saudi Arabia, Yemen at saka Iran. Ano? Uh, kaya't na, nandyan yung bakbakan din sa Lebanon. Ano? Mm -mm. Uh, konektado yun eh. Uh, And then there's the possibility na baka magkagulo din sa Korean Peninsula. Mm -mm. At uh, sa aking research, meron tayong mga approximately 70 plus thousand sa Japan na OFWs uh, at saka similar number doon sa South, South Korea. Korea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, excluded dyan yung mga unregistered. Okay. Ngayon, uh, based on our past experience, kagaya ng uh, yung nangyari doon sa Egypt, sa Libya, uh, at sa mga ibang lugar sa Middle East noon. Uh, ano ang sa pagkaintindi mo uh, na ang, 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 ang crisis management plan ng Pilipinas ngayon, ng, ng ating pamalaan, in terms of bringing our endangered OFWs to safety within the same country halimbawa but a safe place or redeployment in other countries or repatriation ano ba ang naririnig mo ngayon or pagkaintindi mo well sa, throughout the years yeah. ano hindi tayo naman uh, naging pabaya basta may crisis points uh -huh. all over the world um dal national interest natin yun eh yung protection ng OFWs every post has Uh, its own contingency plan. Yes. Kailangan lang ma-update. Um, this week, uh, I think a few days ago, umalis na yung team ng Dole. Uh, they're in Saudi Arabia now yeah. para makinig on the ground kung ano nangyayari. Uh -huh. And I think the FA is also looking at Lebanon. Ang kakaiba kasi ngayon, Saudi Arabia, uh, Israel, And the U.S. are singing the same song, mm -hmm. no? Which is against uh, um, uh, Iran, Iran um, citing Iran as a source of instability in yeah. the region, Hezbollah in in Lebanon, and uh, mismo Kuwait and Saudi Arabia have already instructed their nationals na umalis na ng Lebanon, and this happened na rin before, you know. Um, and, and and there's also Qatar. I, oh, yung diplomatic uh, disputes with, with Qatar with, uh, and, and uh, four Gulf states led, led again by Saudi Arabia. Magkakatahi naman to eh. Tama. And tama. this is, ra kumbaga family squabble din to eh amongst themselves, no? the, the leaders of the region. Naiipit yung mga migrants, no? But um, I, I'm particularly concerned about Lebanon. Okay. Uh, it has happened in the past na nag-rescue tayo, nag, nagpa-uwi tayo ng mga OFWs doon. Um, How many OFWs do we have there? We're not supposed to be deploying domestic workers, pero uh -huh. for some reason, there are. There are, yeah. and it's a growing population. I don't know kung 
mga I, I don't want to hazard a guess but it's really in the tens, in the of, tens of thousands. Of thousands yeah. Yeah. Ang allowed lang kasi sa Lebanon skilled workers. So okay, so let's say uh, there's an emergency, yung mga taga Lebanon that want to be repatriated. How will they be repatriated? By sea, by air, uh, through another country? Ano bang Lagi naman may negotiations yan eh. Tinitingnan yeah. nila yung nearest border. And then tinitingnan nila kung ano yung kung pwede bang by sea o pwede bang by bus um, ang relocation, saan ba yung nearest na safety, ano. Ang, ang maganda lang, well-trained na yung ating ano eh, diplomats natin eh. Kasi nakakailang crisis na master na nga natin yan. Minsan nga may mga Indonesian sa embassy natin lumilipat eh. The name I remember is Ambassador Segis. Yes. Is he still there? He is retired now retired. but uh, still very much... Um, active in monitoring all these oh, events that's good. That's and good. and I hope that the administration taps him kasi wala nang ibang Middle East expert kaysa kay Yusek Segis okay. and uh, nakailang crisis uh, ano na siya um, assignments um, well, Roy Simato used to head the Middle yes. East preparedness team so that's good because he's still in he's government st he's still in government uh -huh. I, I recall uh, I uh, asked the same questions uh, President of Philippine Airlines, si, uh, Jimmy mm. Bautista. Yes. And I asked him whether Philippine Airlines was very much involved in the yeah. uh, preparations mm. no, for any contingencies. I said, yes, we are. Mm -mm. And we're prepared to deploy our aircraft. China yeah. charter sila ng, yeah. ng government. Yeah. In fact, dito sa ano, um, mass repatriation din ng mga workers natin from Saudi uh, because of yung decline maraming decline in the world price of oil, maraming stranded OFWs doon eh. Yes. Dahil na rin sa Saudi station. Oh, oh. So, um, I think the DFA talked to PAL and PAL also um, helped Are you out. watching also the internal uh, situation sa Saudi Arabia? Dahil sa parang uh, within the Saud family, yes. na, nagbabakbakan sila, ano ha? Uh, reform versus uh, traditional, no? Mm -hmm. uh, at, young uh, and versus young the and seniors. old. Oo, mm -hmm. uh, may mga namamatay na nga. Merong mga bi, yung mga linalagay sa bilangguan. Uh, how will that, sa tingin mo, how, how will that impact on uh, the local economy or state of governance and how will that impact on our OFWs, if any? Well, we're praying that they will resolve their own internal issues soon and uh, in an amicable uh -oh. way, no? Yeah. Yan eh, talagang wishful thinking. Um, really, yung, yung nakalagay sa poster, keep calm and carry on, that, that would be the advice I'd give to all our OFWs. Huwag mag-post ng anything political. Um, huwag na makialam kasi these are, you know, very deep uh, emotional and financial issues no kasi si crown prince is really he hell bent on diversifying the economy imposing taxes this is salman yes yeah. si ano uh, mbs ang tawag nila sa kanya crown prince mohammed bin salman so eh, women getting to drive so iba yung is liberalizing ano, uh, saudi arabia is opening up. Yes, he's opening up, but he's also very aggressive on the defense side. Okay. So, you know, this incurs a lot of expenses. This one is meant to drive revenues upwards. So, and and um, with all those things going on, something has to give. No? Well, he's a, young, he's a young man. He's 32 years old. And he's up against uh, older and experienced members of the Saud family. The more conservative. And they're, they're more conservative. Um, and, and that leads me to the issue of extremism. Mm. Kasi it's the traditional conservative uh, members of the Saud family that for a long time have been uh, known or suspected to be funneling funds to extremist groups. At uh, yung usapan doon, yung kasunduan eh, okay, doon kayo manggulo sa labas, wag lang dito. Mm. Uh, ano ang nakikita mong uh, sa ngayon? Uh, is that going to be, is Prince Salman going to stop that? Is that where it's headed? Ano eh, parang, well we've seen it in Marawi, di ba? This thing has a life of its own eh. Yeah. 
no one can really um, direct or misdirect it. It, it, has, uh, it has tentacles of its own. No? So, so I think um, yung alliances, yun ang dapat tingnan, where it's headed, what's um, driving these alliances forward. And uh, we just need to sharpen yung information gathering natin para hindi tayo reactionary. Uh, well, you know, that's what bothers me, Toots, because uh, when we talk of OFWs, many of them uh, are, of course, uh, belong to the Muslim faith, but some are Sunni, others mm -hmm. are influenced by the Shia. Uh, and from what I understand from our Muslim brothers, yung enmity between Sunni and Shia ay dumating na dito sa Pilipinas. No? At uh, ang sabi nila, mararamdaman natin yan as it escalates uh, in the days ahead. Ano? Um, and ang major concern dyan is yung mga OFWs that have been radicalized na mumabalik dito that may have connections to you know, the extreme uh, movements that belong to both Sunni and Shia. Dadali nila yung away nila rito. No? Um, pinag-uusapan ba yan sa OFW circles? Not really. Not really. They're very careful. Oh. And I think, mes dapat yung policy makers dito ang mag-usap niyan. You cannot expect our workers abroad to even dare to talk about those things openly yeah. kasi everyone's being monitored eh. Yeah. Uh, and ako rin, lagi ko sinasabi, just work. Huwag mo nang isipin yeah. yung, ano mo, just fulfill the terms of your contract and um, add value to wherever you are employed. No? Yeah. Um, huwag nang makihalo sa mga political discussions. But having said that, dapat tingnan din natin yung paano mo ma-insulate yung buong overseas employment program for being a laboratory mm -hmm. on, uh, on that level. No? It's very dangerous. Actually, uh, malaki ang headache ng ating mga embassies. Mm. Because they have to be very proactive about this. They have to reach out to the OFW community and uh, apply whatever national security measures are needed to insulate mm. uh, our workers. No? And to also feed back yung national government dito sa mga pangyayari doon so that they can be alerted on, on uh, emerging threats. Uh, dahil sa, in this game, uh, prevention is key. Mm -mm. Yung mga ano, yung iba kasi na mga workers natin, pwede rin through Facebook or I mean, there are radical elements that are really internet savvy, no? Yeah, social media na, savvy. Na pwedeng oh. doon sila start na mag-reach out sa kanila, no? So we also have to be more proactive yes. in reminding our workers. That's correct. Um, at pati yung mga agencies, no? Mga recruitment agencies. Pero sa ngayon, frankly, wala yan sa... Wala pa yan sa wala radar. Wala pa sa radar natin. Wala, wala. pa. Okay. There, there, there's uh, probably a need for the national security community to look into that. Oo. Well, we, remember yung passports natin na yes. bigay na bigyan ng Malaysians, yes. na bigyan ng Ma malaking scandal ang Indonesian. So corruption is also very um, is is an ingredient of violent extremism that we all must be concerned about. Doon tayo na napapasukan ng mga extremists or for that matter yung mga transnational crime uh, syndicates. Uh, they attack us where we are weak and yes. uh, yung corrupt practices natin is a major weak point. And uh, that reflects on the state of our governance. Yes, oo. Kaya yung um, kahit sa immigration natin, uh -huh. sa mga airports, lahat, uh, pagbibigay natin ng mga alien work permits, nagulat kami, Karafi, na yung isang Kuwaiti-owned company with ties to the Kuwait Embassy was able to put up a business wherein Kung OFW ka, pupunta ka sa Kuwait, hindi ka pwedeng lumabas ng bansa Wait. na hindi dadaan sa kanila. Wait. And they were charging 5,000 per head para lang i-verify yung medical exam. Kahit na wala silang uh, doktor sa company niyon. And then it turned out 
the number two um, international terrorist uh, flagged by Interpol was part of that company. So he was earning from the uh, payments, the fees of the OFWs bound for Kuwait. Hindi, na, uh, hindi natin alam how much was amassed by that Kuwaiti company. And so there are many there, others there are like fronts. Him. Yes. Oh, oh. Toots, we've reached the end of our program. Um, now, uh, I'll, I'll put you in this situation. Na, sa harap mo ngayon mm -hmm. ay si Secretary Bellio mm -hmm. okay? at ang ating OFW communities no? uh, from different parts of the world. Nakikinig sila sa iyo. Ano ang message mo sa kanila? Ako ang message ko lang sa kanila is that um, we, we have to come together. At this point in our national life, hindi pwedeng, uh, hindi strategic tayo mag-isip. Dahil umiikot ang mundo, yung ibang mga bansa, strategic kung magplano mag-isip. Kailangan seryosohin natin and magkaroon tayo ng roadmap. For example, paano para hindi na kailangan lumabas palagi as first option. Kundi paano magkaroon ng mas um, uh, magandang uri ng mga trabaho dito sa atin. Hindi yan, magaha, hindi yan mangyayari ng, ano, by accident or by default. It has to be designed and we need the uh, wisdom of our workers to be able to design that. Okay. On that note, uh, Toots, thank you very much thank for, you. for gracing Thinking Out Loud with Rafi Alunan. All right. We thank look you forward to your next uh, appearance here. And advance Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Toots. Merry Thank Christmas you. in your life. Ang programang ito ay hatid sa inyo ng Tagcore. Calling all fundraising organizations. Be a partner of PCSO to its newest project. PCSO Partner Tayo! Interested parties may visit the PCSO Product and Standard Development Department, 3rd Floor, Conservatory Building, Shaw Boulevard, Mandaluyong City. You may also visit any of our branches in your vicinity or province or email us at pcso underscore marketing at yahoo.com. Partner Tayo sa pagtulong sa Pilipino! Nakakatulong ka na, umaasin sa kapa! Feeling mo ba out ka sa mga kwentuhan? Feeling mo ba left out ka sa topic? Baka di mo alam ang trending? Baka di mo pa napanood ang viral? Tuwing Sabado, 6pm, di ka mao-OP sa kwentuhan sa social media. Pagsasamahin ko ang mga video na viral, video na trending. Kasama niyo ako, Victor De Guzman. Ulit, Sabado, magkita-kita tayo, 6pm, live sa TV. DZRH News Television at live sa social media, Facebook at YouTube sa DZRH News Television. DNVS Trending and Viral Show Sabado 6pm sa DZRH News Television. Get ready for an intense, extreme, exciting experience. Here's PCSO's newest, biggest game ever! The Ultra Lotto 658 for only 20 pesos per combination. 50 million pesos is at stake! Pick 6 numbers from 1 to 58. Hit the jackpot and be an ultra millionaire of 50 million pesos! Exciting consolation prizes await you ranging from 20 pesos up to 280,000 pesos! More numbers, bigger prizes! See posters and print ads for details! Sa PCSO, bawat taya para sa kawang gawa. Ang programang ito ay hatid sa inyo ng PCSO.